to Akipana now, I would like to invite Reverend Joyce Bergen uh, to share the word of God with us. And let's give her a big hand. And come pending and apakam, siakam, jong pai tu hai la lung damam. Hey, I was so thankful to have you today and uh, also for uh, through this week. And uh, you're so humble, and uh, you are, uh, I can't describe how to say, you love God so much, and you follow the Holy Spirit's direction, and uh, this, this far, we have been enjoying with you, and uh, the kids love your message, and all the parents, of course, and uh, how to raise up children in God's way, so uh, we gain more benefits from your ministry and we are so thrilled to see you and to have you here. You. Let's give her one more time Thank a you. big hand. Thank Amen. You. Thank you so much. Hello Minglava. Pasian hoi hi. Right? <laughs> That's all I know, sorry. <laughs> but it is a blessing for me to be here. Thank you for the invitation to come and to share with you this morning and also to be with your families this week. And as we are ready to celebrate Thanksgiving, my heart is full of Thanksgiving today for you. It is like being home today with you, being in the presence of the Lord, worshiping together with you, my family. It is a special gift from the Lord for me to be here with you today. And I am so thankful to see your faces, to see your love for God. Uh, I have been in the United States now for about six months. I came back from Burma and have been here about six months now. And I have been missing being around Burmese people. <laughs> And eating good food together. <laughs> and so my heart is full and overfull this week from my time together with you. Just 10 years ago, I had never heard of Burma and knew nothing about it. But now it has a large part of my heart. Amen. God began to speak to me and call me to be a missionary just about 10 years ago now. But I will tell you a little bit about my life before that moment first. I am from a large family. I am one of eight siblings. I have four brothers and three sisters. So we had a very busy house. This week as I was teaching the parenting seminar, I said, I am not a parent. <laughs> but I have lived with a lot of kids. And I am thankful for the example my parents were to me of godly living. I was raised in church, and every time the church was open, my family was there. I had the opportunity to receive the word of God and develop a relationship with the Lord from a young age. I 
So it is beautiful to see even the baby dedication this morning of your commitment to raise your children to follow God. And I love to see your church's heart for children. Even as they are standing up here this morning seeing you are already pouring into them a love for God. My life is evidence of people who invested in children. My parents, my pastors, my Sunday school teachers teaching me a love for the Lord. When I was only 11 years old, God called me to ministry. I didn't know really what that would mean. We don't usually know God's plans when he asks us to do something. But I remember being at the altar at a kid's camp and God speaking to me. And I said yes to God's call. Even before I fully understood it. But when we say yes to God's plan, it is the best thing for our lives. After camp, I came home from church. I told my parents, God has called me into ministry. And they said, okay, why don't you start helping with Sunday school now? <laughs> so I've been doing children's ministry since I was 11 years old. <laughs> And God prepared the way for me to learn and to grow in my church. And to learn to listen to his voice and obey him. I went to Bible school at Trinity Bible College in North Dakota. And and through that experience, God also opened the door for me to begin full-time ministry in San Francisco. My hometown, I grew up in Washington, my hometown is 120 people. Population, Ten were in my family. <laughs> but then God sent me to the city with thousands of people. And I served in a home missions church as the children's pastor and also the principal of our school. About seven years later, I moved to another city near Sacramento, California. And I was a children's pastor there as well as part of the district children's ministry team. And I had no plans to be a missionary. <laughs> I thought I would continue to minister in the church in the United States. But God began to put in my heart a desire to take his word where people did not have the same opportunities. And 
And I was on a missions trip with our church in the country of Cambodia. And God began to speak to my heart and I said, I can see myself doing something like this. And the Holy Spirit said, so can I. <laughs> and God began to show me he was calling me to full-time missions. Sometimes responding to the call of God is just being willing to say yes to whatever he is telling you. Without any clear instructions. I like to have a plan and have clear instructions. So I asked God, where are you calling me to go? And he did not tell me. He gave me no plan. But what he did begin to do was speak to me in dreams. God speaks to us in many different ways. And if we are listening, we can hear him. Even, even, even if you are asleep, you can still hear him. And in these dreams, he began to show me people and places, places I had never been and people I had never met. And and every month for six months, he would show me again a country and people that I still did not know where it was. But one day in a dream, he gave me the name of the country. And he called me to Burma. Amen. When I woke up, I said, where is Burma? <laughs> and I had to look up information and find out if I could even go there as a missionary. God had been opening the opportunity to go to Burma at the same time he was speaking to me. After 50 years of no missionaries from the Assemblies of God being able to go, it was the first time the doors were open again. When we say yes to God's plan, he will make the plan happen. Amen. During that six months before I knew where I was going, God was already putting a love in my heart for you. When I arrived, I already felt like I had been there. It was already familiar to me, already felt like home because God had shown me in my dreams. Sometimes we may feel like God has forgotten us or doesn't have any plans for us. But then he speaks to someone and calls them to your country. He says, I have not forgotten Burma. He has not forgotten you. He has a plan for you. Amen. And he cares so much about you that he is even speaking in dreams to create a desire to share God's love in your country. I 
I arrived in Burma in 2013. So I have been there now already eight years. Now I feel like I am a guest in America. <laughs> and my home is over there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But I know during this time, this last eight years, God has been doing incredible things in Burma. I live in Yangon and I am involved in children's ministry training. But also teaching conversational English as evangelism in the city. I have visited many of your home churches. I have gone to Kalemio. Through many places and have seen what God is doing in the church there. I was amazed at how many churches there are in Burma. Yeah, there are so many pastors. <laughs> but there is a reason there are so many pastors ready for ministry. Because there are still so many people that need to know Jesus. God has raised up a great army of believers to raise a banner of truth. Burma needs you. They need the church to speak truth to this generation to come against the attacks of the enemy and proclaim the word of God it is God's desire to see people come to him and he chooses to do that through you and me. Amen. He has a plan to save the world. And he has a plan to save the world. And he is looking for people to say, I want to be a part of that plan. I want to be a part of proclaiming Jesus to the world. That might be here in Tulsa. It might be in Burma. Or God may even be sending you to a different country. Because he wants people to know he loves them. And he chooses us to do that. It is not always easy. Uh, it is sometimes hard to be obedient. Uh, Ask your children. It is sometimes hard for them to be obedient. Uh, it is sometimes hard for us to listen to God and to do what God is asking us to do. Because we don't always understand it. We don't always like it. But God's plan is always the best way. Amen. This last year has been a little challenging for people all over the world. At the beginning of 2020, I took a trip to Kalemio and to Didim. 
That was the last time I was able to travel. <laughs> right after I got back to Yangon, everything closed down. And this year has had many difficult challenges. Great sickness and loss. Even heartbreak. I was in Yangon on February 1st when the coup started. And it added another difficult thing for the country. More heartbreak and pain. I plan to continue to stay there as long as I could. But in April, my leaders from AGWM said, for safety, we need to have you return to the U.S. It was harder for me to leave than it was for me to stay. Because I knew once I left, we did not know when we could return again. We don't know now when visas will be allowed or when the door will be open for our team, our missionary team, to return. But there is a group of believers in Burma that are still gathering together to worship that are still remaining faithful to God and are still proclaiming his word. Even in the midst of all of this, God is still working. Amen. But what do we do when things become difficult? The natural thing we do is we panic. When we don't want, know what to do, we try our best to do something. You probably experienced Americans doing panic shopping this last year. Buying all the toilet paper, right? It is panic. It is not knowing what we can do, so we do something. And it makes no sense. It is actually not helpful at all. But when things are difficult or when we face crisis, that is our natural response. We also respond in fear. And fear often causes us to do nothing. We are frozen in fear. Unable to move forward. So when difficulty comes, when crisis comes, we either do things that don't make any sense or we do nothing. But God gives us instructions of how to respond. It is not the natural way that just happens without thinking. But it is a way we respond if we are following Christ. It looks different than how others respond. And I know this year has brought great tragedy. But it will not be the last time we face problems. 
Some of you are facing personal crisis right now. You got bad news from the doctor. Uh, or you are grieving loss in your family every day we are faced with circumstances we don't like but I want to give you good news today in the middle of our problems God is there he has not forgotten you. Amen. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, we see the people of Israel are in a similar situation. The people of Judah, they are in a similar situation to the world today. They are facing problems. Everyone in the world could say they are facing problems. And some look bigger than others. I saw a picture of Mount Kakaborze. In, uh, Himalayas, right? Is that right? How do you Himalayas. It? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's Baking a huge it. mountain. If you are standing at the feet, it is overwhelming and too big to see the other side. But if you step back away from the mountain, it is beautiful and majestic. Today I want us to step back a little bit. And to even see our problems become beautiful. God has a way of turning the worst situation into something amazing. Amen. And in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, the king, King Jehoshaphat, receives some bad news. He receives news that in, the enemy is coming to attack them. And he is overwhelmed. This army is bigger than his army. And it says that he was terrified. But instead of panicking, instead of running away in fear, he gives us an example of what to do when we face crisis. And he called the people together for prayer. He called nationwide fasting and prayer. When we face trouble, the first response should be seek God. Seek the Lord in your problems. Don't panic and try to fix it yourself. Don't get stuck in fear. But seek the Lord. Let's read in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verses 5 through 12. Ita ka lai siang thong mo khang tang thu ni na alian som ni aneu nga pan ni na som ni dong isim dia. Okay. อ่าอีตะกะเกมะนงซิมนิงมอเลตัวเจียงอินโตปาอินซุงอินซุงอินตัวทักหมายจูราเลเยรูซาเล็มเยรูซาเล็มกิคบนาซุงะเยโฮซ
nang zo lo hi ko te pasiano hi gam a ateng mi te nami israel maya hol hia in nalompa abraham suan le khak te tunga aton tung dingin pia hi lo na hi hiam amao hi amao te hi gam a teng in nang ma min ding hi lai a biak in khat lamu a ei te tunga sian na nam sao Tuhan na ahi kile, na na ahi kile, kaya pi hong tun le, hi insung amamin om ahi manin, hi in maya dingin, igim na huna ama tunga aki kouding ama in hongza in hong hong ding hi chi uhi, tua in Tu in enin Egypt gampan in Israel te hong pai kiat lai in nasim nasim saklo amau te in pel in ama suk siat lo u amon amon mi te le mob mi te le sir mual gam mi te enin kalua ding u kau te tunga nong piak sa nang ma nei sa panin kau te hol kia in Hor hor he di in hong pia hong hong pai na to amau te in kou te hong le tu zo sop u hi kou te pasian o amau te tu a tu hen lo ding na hi hiam ba hang in ba hang ba hang hiam chi le kou te in do ding in a hong pai hi mi hon te tam pi a do ding in ta ha na ka nei ke u hi Kaci nadiingin katai katai kei kaci nadiing katai kei wa nang ma bekin nang ma bek kong misuan uhi acihi. Amen. Amen. In his time of crisis, the king went before the Lord in prayer. Tua tak haksan na tua cai na pasian maya kumpi papa ina. And his prayer was, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Kaci nadi ingu teh kau ngai pasian, ahi zon kami nang tua mi dong suanung, kami dong suanung cih. When we seek God, He knows what to do. Pasian mai zon leng pasian asep ziading teh. We don't have to have the answer. Tuni na ihi ding pen efek pin eni teh kulohi. Many times in prayer we go to the Lord and we say, "Tell me the answer." Tuni na tuing e ciang na tu akian na aci na kahiran yong geno cih yang. We want Him to give us instructions of what to do. Pasian in isep ziad yong gen le ut yang de yang. But this example that King Jehoshaphat said is not to ask what to do, but to keep our eyes on Him. Kita kah Jehoshaphat ina ahi dan ding gen lo ina pasian maya kami tu. Our prayer is to seek God. And as we seek Him, everything else will work out. We are not seeking Him so we can fix it. We are seeking Him to trust that He will fix it. And when we seek the Lord, He will speak to us. And as the people gathered together and they prayed, it says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon them. It's that the men and the women and the children, they were all seeking the Lord together. They were all waiting to hear from God. God speaks to all of us, any age. Pasien ina aneu alian cilo ina itu ngau tuongen he. When we are listening to him, we will hear his voice. Ama o ama o iza inga ina le ama o zading he. And on that crowd, it says the spirit of the Lord came upon one of the young men. Tuataka alai siang do simleng tuataka pasien khas yang kapen nau pang kat kang nau kat tunga kia kibuai na kia na. And in the middle of their crisis, God gave them a message of hope. Tuatai taki na haksan na kom kala lamet na ding tu kat hong omina. Let's read verse fifteen. Tuataka som lenga sim ni ma som lenga na bang ciam cile. Tuat siang in ama in Judah gam 
Judah gam khem peule, Jerusalem a teng khem peule, kum pi jeho safet o, ngai un topa in hi bang in note tunga hong gen hi, ki take un la, hi atam mi hon hang in lung ke ke un, bahang yam chile, galdona in note a hiloa, persian a hi hi. Amen. In the middle of the battle, the message that God gave was, you can trust me. You don't have to be afraid or discouraged. This is not our battle. God is fighting for you. We can trust in his ability to defeat the enemy. We do not have to try to solve it. Our trust is in that God knows what he is doing. And he speaks to us again today. Do not be afraid or discouraged. He knows what you're going through. He knows how you're feeling. He knows the battle you're facing. And he says, don't be afraid or discouraged. This isn't your battle. You can trust me. Think of a young child that sleeps very soundly in their parents' arms with no thought of what is going on around them. They are comforted, they are safe, they know they can trust that their parents will protect them. They are not worried about anything happening around them. That is what God is saying in this verse here. Rest in him. Trust in him. Don't worry about the things around you, just focus on the one who is holding you. Whatever you are facing today, you can trust God. He has been faithful in the past. He is faithful today. He will be faithful tomorrow. And we can trust him. Amen. And as we learn to trust the Lord, as we seek him and we trust him, there is this response of obedience that comes out of our hearts. Trusting God is not just hearing what he says, but then doing what he says. Often when God tells us to do something, it is not what we expected. It is not how we would do it. But we are to be obedient to what God says to us. As this word of the Lord came over the people of Judah, it brought encouragement, but it also brought instruction. And the message of the Lord said, I want you to go into battle tomorrow, but I don't want you to take any weapons with you. I don't want you to fight. This is not what they expected. This is not what they had trained to do. In the past, they would send in their strongest warriors. They would send in their best weapons and they would fight that way. But God was asking them to surrender their way. To do it his way instead. Amen. Amen.
When God asks us to do something, he is the expert, not us. He knows the bigger picture. We just see the mountain in front of us, but God can see the greater view of everything. But we have a choice to choose to obey. We can try it our way or we can try it God's way. And what he shows us in this passage is that when we are obedient, we will be successful. It is not our ability that gives us success. It is our obedience to the Lord that brings us success. He said, I want you to go into the battle. I want you to take nothing with you. I want you to just march into battle with no weapons. And they chose to obey. In verse 17 it says, you will not have to fight this battle. Just take your position, stand firm, and wait for the deliverance of the Lord. Amen. When we are facing problems, the last thing we want to do is wait. We want it to be over. We want to get through problems as fast as possible. But God asked them to stand and wait for him to act. Waiting requires obedience. We are thankful that God is fighting for us, but sometimes we are impatient with his plan to do it. I would like there to be peace restored and able to return to Myanmar tomorrow. But sometimes the timing is not what we think. Some of you have been waiting for God to answer your prayer for many years. And it's hard to wait. But it is part of obedience. And obedience is your success. Amen. So we seek the Lord and we trust him and we obey him no matter what circumstance we face. But then there is another thing that happens in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. In the middle of the battle, they began to praise the Lord. And they went out ahead of the army and they said the front line is going to be the worship team. And King Jehoshaphat looked at the worship team and he said, you go first and you lead the people in praise. And so the worship team went out in front. And they began to lead the people in praise. But what I want you to see today is they were not praising because the battle was won. 
They were praising before they even started the battle. They were praising because God is worthy. In verse 21, it says, After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out ahead of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Amen. Not worshiping because of what God was going to do, but because of the splendor of His holiness. Amen. We can praise God no matter what's happening because He is worthy of praise. He is holy and His splendor is mighty. Uh, our praise is not dependent upon our circumstance our praise is our worship to God and as the people began to praise it said at the same moment that they began to praise that God sent an ambush ahead of them to attack the enemy and while they were worshiping God, God was fighting the battle for them. While they were keeping their eyes on God, God was doing the work for them. And while they were trusting and praising God, the enemy was defeated. They arrived at the battlefield. Everyone was already destroyed. Said not even one person was left to fight. God is fighting for you. Amen. And it is not our job to try to figure out what to do. Keep our eyes on him. At the end of the thing you are fighting through, at the end of your crisis, God will bless you with more than you can even handle. Because he already knows what's on the other side of the mountain. He already knows what will happen when you get past this problem. He has already prepared blessing for you. Amen. I want to end with this scripture out of Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17 it says for the Lord your God is living among you he is a mighty savior he 
He is your mighty savior. He takes your fear. And he fills you with gladness. He rejoices over you with joyful songs. Not just in comfortable, easy times, but in difficult times too. God really loves you. He really cares about you. So much that he said, I am going to be with you in every storm. And you can just stay close and rest in him. And he will take care of everything going on around you. Amen. And so this morning I want to ask you to stand with me. And I know some of you are carrying some heavy burdens today. And things are not going the way you thought they would go. And you are waiting to see God bring victory. And you are watching those circumstances and hoping they will they will soon change. But today, as we stand together, we can look instead a different direction. And we can take our eyes of our, off of our problem and look to God. You can trust him. He knows everything about you. He knows everything you need. And he wants to speak to you today. The same words that he spoke to the people of Judah, do not be discouraged or afraid. Do not lose hope. But listen to what God is speaking today. And that you would walk in obedience to his perfect plan. Leaving this place today full of praise and celebration. Not because your problem is gone. But God is good. God is worthy of praise. We should in the midst of battle be singing out to the Lord. Fight your battles in prayer. Fight your Fight your battle with praise. So as you leave today, I want you to go ready for battle. With your eyes on the Lord. And your heart full of praise. I want to pray over you today. But if you need to seek the Lord too, I want to invite you to spend some time in prayer seeking him. He will speak to you. He will instruct you. He will show you what to do. Amen. Amen. Lord, I just thank you, God, that you are here with us today. We know that you are rejoicing over us today. Lord, we turn to you and we put our eyes on you this morning. Forgive us for being distracted or by looking at things that we are overwhelmed with instead of looking to you. Lord, I pray against fear this morning that has kept people from seeing you. 
that fear would be gone in Jesus name that they would instead be full of your peace and even if they are still sick and even if there is still a problem that they would have an overwhelming sense of peace today Lord, let them wear peace like clothing that it would surround them and cover them. Lord, we pray that you would speak to us today through your spirit. Bring hope and encouragement today. We open our hearts to you. We want to hear you speak today. Lord, let everything else be silent that we may hear you alone. Every man and every woman and every young person, every child that you would speak to, all of them today. Lord, we put our trust in you. We surrender our will to you. We give you our own plans, our own way. We will trust you and obey you. Lord, give us patience in the waiting time. Give us strength to be obedient. Lord, I pray especially for the young people today, God, that you would give them strength to stand firm. That no matter what comes against them, they would not be knocked down. But they would rest in you. That you would fight their battles for them. Lord, today we give praise to you. We praise you for what you are doing. We praise you for what you've done in the past. We praise you for what you are going to do in the future. But we praise you because you are good. Because you are worthy. Lord, let our hearts be full of praise. That what comes out of our mouth, even in the midst of difficulty, is a song of praise. That each person here would walk into the battles that they face at home and at work they would walk into them with praise today pray for an anointing of joy upon them rejoice over them today let your joy saturate them, fill them completely. Lord, I pray that you would pour out abundant blessing upon this church. That it would be even more than they can handle. That each family, Lord, would walk in the blessing of, of obedience, in the blessing of, of trust, in the blessing of rejoicing with you. That it would be even more than they imagined that your love would fill them daily. So I pray, God, that as they go forward, they would see victory. And they would rejoice in what you are doing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you.